Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Microsoft Build Ask the Expert section for Microsoft Edge for developers and IT pros. Uh, my name is Kyle Flug, and I'm a program manager for the Developer Experiences team for Microsoft Edge. I'll be your moderator today, and we'll introduce you to our cast of experts. We'll be taking your questions in just a moment here. Um, as a reminder, if you haven't uh, already watched the Microsoft Edge State of the Platform session at Build, uh, you can find that in the related sessions link to the right of the video stream here. We'll also share a URL uh, in a few moments here that uh, you can visit for more resources related to that session. Um, as a reminder, as we move through the Ask the Experts today, uh, please do abide by the Microsoft Digital Event Code of Conduct. Uh, you can also find this pasted into the chat uh, if you need to reference the code of conduct during the session. As the session proceeds, you can use the chat box to ask your questions. Um, they'll be posted anonymously, or you can choose to use your name. Uh, and once those are approved, um, you can upvote yours as well as upvote other questions, um, and we'll do our best to answer them verbally in the order that they were asked. Now, uh, we also have some support crew from the team here who will be asking questions directly and or sorry, answering questions directly in the chat. This session will be recorded and it'll be available for the next year until tell our next build. Uh, so we ask that you please don't record it on your own. Uh, we'll be able to cover the recording on our end. Um, and then please do help our moderators, you know, refrain from posting spam or uh, unrelated uh, topics in the chat so we can focus on getting questions through. Uh, so with that said, um, we're going to move on to the Ask the Experts here. Uh, we are covering a few topics that uh, were covered in the Edge State of the Platform session that I mentioned. Uh, so we have experts who can cover everything from Chromium web platform changes and uh, new web standards that our team has contributed, uh, web applications, including technologies like WebView 2 and progressive web apps, uh, and developer tools in Microsoft Edge. Uh, we also have Stephanie here who will be uh, answering questions related to dual screen web development, and you can find more on that topic in the uh, Surface presentations, as well as some of the on-demand sessions related to that topic. So um, with that said, I'd love to uh, turn the floor over to our cast of presenters here uh, and take some time to uh, allow them to introduce themselves. So as I mentioned, I'll be your moderator. Uh, my name is Kyle Flug. Uh, I work on the developer experiences team as a program manager. Um, and I'll be uh, selecting questions and uh, uh, introducing uh, the various experts as we go along. Uh, and I'll turn the floor over to Colleen to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Colleen Williams. <clears throat> I'm a principal program manager in the enterprise and security area of Edge. So we build all the enterprise and security features and I can answer questions related to those areas. Oh, hi. Hi, my name is Lee Min. I'm a program manager working on the Edge web app space, which includes uh, PBA and WebView 2. I primarily work on the WebView 2 uh, uh, WebView 2 applications. So if you have any questions in that space, uh, happy to answer any of them. And if you have uh, PBA questions, I'll try my best as well. Awesome. Hey, folks, my name is Scott Lowe. I'm a PM lead on the Microsoft Edge web platform team. Uh, so my team does a lot of their work upstream in the Chromium project and focuses on areas like input, DOM, CSS, scrolling, layout, fonts, inking, accessibility, JavaScript, uh, et cetera. So more than happy to answer any questions related to the web platform. And I'll turn it over to Stephanie to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie Simak. I am a program manager on the developer experiences team, and I work um, in conjunction with our web platform and the Surface Duo team uh, for dual screen web development. Cool. Hi, I'm Zohair. Uh, rhymes with no hair, so that's a fun way to remember it. Uh, I work on developer tools, which includes the in-browser F12 tools, VS Code extensions, and things like that, as well as our automation tools like uh, Microsoft Edge Driver, uh, Playwright, uh, and Selenium. Great. Thanks, everyone, for the introductions. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, you know walk through a couple of questions, uh, sort of generally to catch up on content while we wait for questions to come in from the audience. Um, so, you know, I want to, to jump in with something real quick here, Scott. I think in the Build 2021 uh, session uh, that you and Zohair presented, you walked through a lot of advancements in Chromium that we've contributed that sort of move the web platform forward that are available as experiments for uh, developers. And I wanted to kind of ask you if you could elaborate on um, what origin trials are and how developers can get involved in some of those experimental features. 
Yeah, totally. So origin trials are uh, essentially a way for web developers to try out uh, early renditions of upcoming web uh, APIs in a safe manner. Um, and it also lets them actually deploy these web APIs to their um, own production websites. So it doesn't require users to go in and you know turn on any experimental flags and things like that. So essentially um, how it works is, you know, when we have an API that's ready for origin trial, we put it in the browser behind what we call a flag um, and we publish an origin trial on our origin trials developer console, which we'll share a link for in the chat. Um, and what uh, that enables developers to do is they can then go to the console and register for these different origin trials to try out these APIs. And after registering, they'll get a token given to them uh, that they can either include in an HTTP header or in a meta tag on their website. And once um, that's all been done, if a user visits their website um, in Edge, they'll actually be able to get access to that upcoming uh, web API. So it's a great way for you know, web developers to see what's uh, upcoming and to get their hands on things early. And also it gives uh, them a chance to provide us with feedback on the API shape. Um, and we're always you know, listening for that feedback to make sure that we're uh, building the right API surface for developers. Awesome, thanks Scott. Um, I saw one question that was uh, posted in the chat about uh, workspaces and Edge. So I think this is referring to uh, some of the tab organization features that have been available in preview channels. Um, and actually, I don't think we have anyone here who uh, is a, an expert in sort of the user experience side of things. Um, what I encourage you to do is reach out to uh, the Twitter handle for Edge, uh, MS Edge Dev on Twitter, uh, or uh, reach out to the Insider forums, which are a great place to uh, ask sort of questions about the experience roadmap for Edge. Uh, in this case, I think there is a feature that is available behind a flag uh, that allows you to, um, you know, do some organizational options with tab sets. Uh, but I'm not an expert in uh, exactly when that might roll out or what the details are there. Um, Colleen, if you if you don't mind, I think there's some interesting news that has happened uh, in the last few weeks regarding Microsoft's sort of browser uh, options. I'm wondering if you could kind of share a quick recap of the news and what it might mean for uh, businesses and developers. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, so for those of you who uh, keep in track, uh, there were three Microsoft browsers that uh, folks had to support. And uh, we we for uh, we took one away in uh, April, the Microsoft Edge Legacy. So this was Edge that shipped as the um, browser in Windows 10. Um, and we re removed that and gave you Edge on Chromium. And then last week we announced the deprecation and the retirement of IE 11. So uh, this um, announcement came last Wednesday. We have a blog post and an FAQ on what that means. But we will be retiring IE 11, which uh, is 25 years old. Uh, this year will be 26 in August, uh, as of June of 2022. So we have a lot of information in our public blog posts and our FAQ about what this means. But don't worry, you know, we're not, if you need IE 11 for whatever reason, uh, IE mode is your path forward in, in uh, Microsoft Edge. So IE mode allows for IT admins to put sites on an enterprise mode site list that needs IE 11 for whatever reason. A popular one is ActiveX controls like Java, Silverlight, um, any doc modes that are needed. So you put this site on the on the enterprise mode site list and then the, the end user gets moved into IE mode um, and they're uninterrupted. They don't have to move to another browser. They don't have to figure out where they are, where they are and where they're going. Uh, so IE mode is your path forward. Edge is your future. Uh, so go ahead and take a look. We'll put some links in the uh, in the chat for you to take a look at the announcement and educate yourself and let us know if you have any questions. Great, thanks Colleen. Uh, it looks like there's a question related to uh, WebView 2 uh, in the chat. Um, I think it's re uh, related to uh, Chromium-based Edge and uh, WebView 2 coming to UWP platforms. Um, so I think that you know the first thing I'd say here is we don't have uh, you know timelines that we can share as far as when browsers will come to uh, other operating system platforms or devices. Um, but you know, I'll turn it over to Lehman to elaborate on the uh, WebView 2 aspect of this question: when WebView 2 will be available uh, on other UWP platforms. Yeah, this is a great question. So for WebView 2, um, UWP is definitely something we are paying very closely, uh, uh, paying very close attention to in terms of evaluating. Unfortunately, I don't think we have currently a concrete timeline to share about when whether the support is coming to you know, Windows desktop. But again, this is something we're looking at, and we're hoping to share some some form of timeline soon uh, through uh, through WinUI. 
uh, the this uh, and this is primarily for desktop for uh, other devices similar to sort of uh, uh, what Kyle just mentioned about edge. Uh, we don't have a concrete timeline yet for other devices. This sort of first depends on when can uh, edge be you know part of the uh, other devices. Great, thank you, Lehman. Um, I think there's a, there's an interesting question about uh, Internet Explorer compatibility here um, from Keith. Um, so Colleen, it, Internet Explorer used to be the only browser that could be used to register for certain code signing certificates. Um, will Edge be taking over this code signing function? Um, yeah, that's the question. Yeah, so um, I think I'm going to go check my email because I believe our trusty Eric Lawrence answered this internally somewhere. And let me see if I can find that answer and then uh, I'll put that in the chat. But that, that's a great question. And if we don't um, follow up on that, uh, Keith, uh, feel free to, if, we, if I don't have the answer, feel free to follow up with me on Twitter or, or Eric Lawrence, uh, and we'll go ahead and get that answered. Thank you. And then while we have you here, Colleen, I think there's a question that was a uh, response to your answer about uh, IE, which is that um, the, the uh, person understood that IE mode was only available for enterprise use and is curious if it's available to normal users. I was wondering if somebody would catch that. Yes, consumer mode IE mode is available. We have documentation on that. Um, we are making some improvements to the consumer mode side because right now it's it's not super simple and we want to make it much easier for people um, on the on the consumer side who don't have an IT admin to set all that up for you. So I will go ahead and put again that information in the chat. Um, it's easier to describe through that, but thank you so much for for clarifying. Love when people catch things. Great, thanks, Colleen. Uh, Scott, I think this next one probably goes to you. Uh, this is a question from the State of, of the Platform video. Um, so the person, I remember seeing something in the State of the Browser video about improving the way web pages appear. Uh, and the question is, uh, will something be incorporated along lines of uh, forcing dark mode for users who have chosen a dark theme? Yeah, great question. Um, I don't think we have anything to announce today. That's definitely something that we've considered in the past and has been on our backlog. Um, keep an eye on the Microsoft Edge roadmap. Um, we can drop a link uh, in the chat for that as well um, for the latest updates there. Um, and we'll certainly keep that up to date as our thinking evolves. Great. Um, there's another question. Uh, I think you're going to be the, the star of the SD experts, Colleen. There's another question about um, apps that use embedded IE browsers via the Visual Studio control. Um, will those still render in IE using that control after the uh, IE uh, deprecation? Web browser control, WebOC, Web, uh, what was called WebView for Edge Legacy, that is not impacted by the announcement we made last week. And so I, I believe somebody, I think uh, Genevieve or Catherine uh, put in a link to our FAQ that shows what is in scope and what is out of scope in the IE 11 announcement. So hopefully that will help uh, e ease things there. Great, thanks, Colleen. Um, and uh, I think this is a follow up on a similar topic. Uh, let's see. Um, since Edge Legacy is going to be remaining for the moment on non-desktop devices, will there be a way for developers to test in Edge Legacy? I'd like to know why you need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so part of the announcement is so you don't have to continue to develop uh, in IE 11's, uh, the standalone, the desktop application. IE mode is there if it needs to continue to be utilized for, for backwards compatibility. Um, but you shouldn't be developing anything new based upon IE 11. If there's a scenario uh, there we're unfamiliar with, let us know. And I think I, it looked like the question, I may have misstated this, it looked like the question was calling out Edge Legacy specifically as well. Um, so I'll post this in the chat, but one thing I wanted to offer is if, if you do have a need to support Edge Legacy on, um, for example, non-Windows or you know non-desktop devices like Xbox, which the question mentioned, uh, we actually have virtual machines available on our developer site that you can use for this. Um, so I posted a link to those in the chat and you can actually uh, test uh, the most recent version of Edge Legacy via those virtual machines as well. All right, I need to catch up on my questions in the chat. So um, while I do that, actually, um, I'd love to turn the floor over to you, Lehman, for a second. If you wouldn't mind sharing just kind of the latest uh, announcements coming from WebView 2, what's new in WebView 2 uh, at Build this year? Yeah, 
Uh, definitely happy to do that. And for folks who are not super familiar with WebView 2, WebView 2 is uh, a way for, for developers to embed uh, the edge rendering engine into their application to render web content. This is sort of a, a next uh, evolution of the current WebOC control based on IE and the uh, HTML web view based on, you know, obviously Edge HTML. So some of the new stuff that's coming to build this year is uh, along, uh, uh, we recently GA'd the support for uh, WebView 2 support in uh, WinUI 3. So now you can use WebView 2 in production for all of your Win32 C and C++ application, your .NET applications, or your WinUI application. So all of that, uh, for all of these different categories of applications, you can hop onto the uh, latest platform. The other interesting news is WebView 2 is becoming part of the Windows operating system and will be inboxed in the, in the OS. Uh, I believe uh, it's either already in the latest Insider build, or if not, it will be there very, very, very soon. So uh, for people who are you know, on the latest operating system, uh, WebView 2 will uh, by default be there. Uh, besides that, we, you know, WebView 2 is something we continually to work, continuously working on, and uh, we release updates basically every six weeks, similar to how Edge is you know, being updated. We have uh, a whole bunch of uh, changes that is you know, being, pub uh, being published throughout the the, throughout, throughout last year. Uh, some of the interesting ones include like the, the new transparency support. You can set transparency of your web views. Uh, you will, you'll be able to suspend, web, uh, suspend web views and rehydrate them uh, if you have inactive web views to sort of like, you know, boost, uh, uh, to sort of lessen the memory pressure if the web, web views are inactive. And we recently did a whole bunch of work for uh, uh, for additional iframe support. So there, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of this stuff. I'll uh, try to include a link uh, in the chat for our release notes so that folks can, you know, keep tabs on what's happening. That's it. Great. Thanks, Lehman. Um, it looks like there's a good question here about touch improvements coming to Edge, so I'll turn over the floor to Scott. I think real quickly before I do that, um, you know, we don't have, as I mentioned, we don't have folks here from the sort of user experience side of, of the house because this is mostly focused on developer content. Um, so we can't elaborate on touch improvements that might come to the Edge browser experience itself, but Scott can talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing in the platform to make touch a better experience. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. So I think there's a number of opportunities that we're thinking about um, in terms of making the web platform more touch capable. Um, a few things that come kind of immediately to mind. One thing is uh, more touch friendly controls. So for example, like the number field today with the little tiny arrows to go up and down and the eyedropper um, color picker that we've added recently, um, those are not super touch friendly today. So I think there's some optimizations we could do there. Um, another thing that's top of mind is touch uh, enabled drag and drop. This is something that uh, it does exist in Chromium today, but it's off by default due to some bugs um, with the Windows implementation. So I think we could definitely step up um, and help get that enabled in Chromium uh, for everyone. Um, some other areas that also come to mind are in the scrolling space. So we've had this long uh, standing you know, gap, I suppose, uh, called slop gap, which is essentially when you put your finger on the screen and start dragging um, to, to scroll, you'll actually see um, that there's a slight gap between where your finger was on the content and, and where it is when you're performing the scroll. So we have some ideas on how we can minimize that, um, as well as to improve um, prediction to further reduce the latency of touch scrolling. So uh, very much top of mind for us at the moment, and I think you can expect to see um, some more improvements in those spaces coming shortly. Great, thanks, Scott. Um, and it looks like uh, there was a follow-up question related to platform. So I think what, while we have you on camera, um, somebody was asking about giving feedback uh, specifically for accessibility issues or people with uh, with vision impairments, for example. Uh, is there a way to give specific uh, feedback for accessibility issues? Yeah, absolutely. I think probably, so my team owns um, accessibility on the web platform. So if you have Twitter, uh, feel free to reach out directly at underscore Scott Lowe. Um, and I'm happy to field those requests and take them back to the team. Awesome. Is there a way to do that um, to, to tag issues via browser feedback or another way if uh, folks don't have Twitter? Um, yeah, feel free to submit feedback via um, the feedback tool in Edge. Um, if you mention, you know, accessibility somewhere in the title there, I'll make sure it gets routed to uh, the right folks. Great. Thanks, Scott. Um, there's a good question in here about, uh, speaking of Twitter, uh, for folks who don't have Twitter, uh, the best way to engage with the team, uh, and specifically how active is the MS Edge team on Reddit? 
Um, so, you know, for this question, I think the first thing I'll say is, uh, yes, we know not everybody has Twitter. So, you know, we do try to, to ha listen in other areas as well. Um, as Scott mentioned, you can always use the send feedback tool in the browser. Uh, for Reddit as well, we uh, are fairly active on the Microsoft Edge subreddit. Uh, and uh, Missy Quarry, our community manager, uh, is very active there and listening and making sure feedback makes it to the correct team. Uh, so feel free to share questions uh, or feedback or comments there as well. And Missy will uh, help route those to the correct people. Um, Lehman, for WebView 2, there's a good question in the chat about uh, extensions in WebView 2. Will WebView 2 ex uh, support extensions in the future? Yeah, this is this is a really great question. We actually have someone. Uh, this is our actually our summer interns project. I don't I don't know if I'm saying too much. So we're currently evaluating uh, sort of what what are the extension support we need to have. Uh, so without promising anything right away, because there's are there are certain complexity we need to work through, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of details in terms of like supporting extension services on the back end, make sure you know these, these things are getting paid off and all that. Uh, the, the one question I want to ask the developer who's asking about this is what what is the what is the exact scenario you're trying to achieve? Are you trying to basically um, include a particular arbitrary uh, extension as part of your application? Let's say I want to pre-install pre a you know app blocker or a pass password manager and use that for my application, or I want to pre-install a you know React DevTools so that I can you know debug my my application with React DevTools, or you're looking into a different case where where it's more you're opening the you want to open the Edge uh, extension store the Chrome extension store to your end user let them browse it and just ins install whatever they want. These are two different scenarios. The likelihood of the former one getting supported is probably higher than the, than the latter one, but it's sort of it's good to understand a bit more on uh, what are you, what exactly are you looking at. Great, thanks, Lehman. Um, and speaking of WebV2, uh, there's a question about uh, migration guidance. So is there a migration document for people who might be moving from hosting the web browser control to WebV2, uh, and how can they uh, how can they sort of understand potential feature gaps there? Yeah, uh, migration paths are something we're we're obviously interested in. There, uh, there, there are actually various. Uh, uh, guides that we're that that's that is sort of uh, on our roadmap in terms of what we're supposed to write. We're thinking about potential guides for people to, for folks to migrate from the HTML uh, WebView to oh sorry the HTML WebView control to uh, to WebView two, and then there's there there might be a different guide we would be writing about uh, you know going from the WebOC control the IE browser control to WebView two. These two will be a slightly different for folks that are moving from the HTML. The pass is probably a little bit similar in a sense, a little bit smoother in the sense that a lot of the API, like the API coverage are more and the naming are intentionally similar between these two web views just so that it's easier for folks to just uh, migrate away. For IE, for IE based control, it's a little bit more complicated because IE really supports a lot of things that are interesting um, and, and that may not be, that may not, may no longer be supported. And the web platform itself, like the when you because when you move uh, when you're migrating your web view, it's not just the particular control you're migrating. Uh, your web content, if uh, if your web content only works on IE, you also need to make sure um, your web content uh, you know migrates uh, successfully to Chromium. Um, so again, this is uh, obvious. This is both something we're we're sort of looking at. Um, uh, I ex I expect we 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 uh, we can write up some guidance for our developers. Awesome. Thanks, Lehman. Um, there's a good question in the chat about uh, profiles. So is it possible to uh, choose uh, profiles that map to specific sites uh, or to deactivate a profile? Um, you know, if you have multiple accounts and you only want to be using one in a given workflow. Um, I don't think we've got uh, any specific information to announce here. You know, I know the team has heard feedback that associating uh, sites with profiles is something that would be interesting and, and, and so is looking into that. Um, but I don't think there's uh, any specific uh, plans to share just yet. Um, I will say, you know, things like this feedback about how you use profiles and how it might be more convenient. You know, we always appreciate hearing that um, via the the feedback tool and Edge. Uh, this is a you know feature we're really excited about and brings a lot of value to users. And so, understanding more about um, how it fits into your workflow and where the pain points might be is always useful for the team. Um, I think similarly, there's good feedback about the PDF reader as well. And, you know, I think one of the things that folks really liked about the previous version of Edge was the PDF reader. And 
Um, there's a question on whether that will be made into a standalone app. Um, you know, I'm not aware of any plans to that effect. I think, you know, again, this is a place where we always appreciate feedback. Um, I also know the uh, the PDF team in Edge is, you know, working very actively on improvements to the PDF reader uh, in the new Edge, um, you know, including, uh, you know, better form filling and interactivity and features like that. So, you know, I would encourage you to share your feedback on the places where uh, the new Edge you may feel like uh, has regression so we can make sure to prioritize those as well. Um, all right, and while I catch up on questions and get the next one, um, Scott, do you want to talk through some of the recent contributions in Chromium that you mentioned in your talk and maybe sort of a quick tour of what, what the platform team has been up to? Yeah, sure. So there's been um, quite a few um, changes that we've made to Chromium recently. Um, in the talk uh, that was referenced at the, the beginning of, of the introduction, um, I focused in on a couple of them. Um, I could chat about those briefly and then share some others as well. Uh, Canvas formatted text is one that we've been working on, um, making numerous improvements to Canvas um, because we've seen usage there steadily rising. Um, so Canvas formatted text will give developers a way to do um, advanced text shaping features um, and leverage a lot of the existing logic the browser already has um, so that they don't have to recreate that logic and script um, themselves. Um, delegated ink trails is another um, investment that we've been making in Chromium that I'm personally really excited about. Um, basically bringing ink latency down on the web and bringing it more in line with native inking latency. So um, we actually just recently published uh, a, a web incubator community group uh, specification through the W3C to kick off the process of getting that standardized. Um, and we're really excited to see developers start to pick that up and create uh, more low latency inking in their web applications. Uh, the eyedropper API was another um, API that I covered in uh, the talk, um, basically letting web developers uh, create their own color picking UI on the web. And also dark mode controls on Windows was another thing our team recently did to align uh, the web, the native web platform controls with dark modes um, existing look and feel. Um, some other uh, areas that are upcoming and other things that we've been working on are things like the highlight API. So giving developers a really easy way to highlight content on the web without needing to manipulate the DOM, which can lead to you know, performance and compatibility issues. Um, scroll timeline is another thing we've been working on, which basically allows developers to create animations uh, that are tied to scroll, like scroll bar position. So you can imagine nice parallax effects and things like that. Um, and there's been a whole bunch of other uh, uh, investments as well, things like virtual keyboard APIs, which give developers the ability to control how uh, their content reflows around on-screen keyboards, um, as well as numerous improvements in the progressive web app space. So the slide that I have in the uh, presentation has a bunch more things. You can also check out our explainers repository on GitHub, where we kind of post our latest thinking about uh, new web platform ideas. And I'll drop a link to that in the chat. Awesome, thanks, Scott. Uh, and speaking of new platform features, you know, I think one of the things that uh, we've talked about elsewhere at Build this year is dual screen devices and moving forward uh, platform uh, capabilities so web developers can take advantage of dual screen devices. Uh, Stephanie, do you want to talk a little bit about what's new here and uh, maybe you can point people to your talk? Yeah, so um, I spoke on a couple new APIs that the web platform team has been working on, um, and this makes designing for dual screens a lot easier and possible. And so um, there's currently a CSS media query in development, and that is what will um, help identify that you're on a dual screen device. Um, and then we also introduced some um, new CSS environment variables, so that'll help um, developers in identifying the uh, dimensions of each viewport on a dual screen device. And then finally, there's a JavaScript API. Um, because these are experimental and still in development, um, we originally had something called the window segments enumeration API. But in our origin trial and developer feedback, um, we found that this uh, that developers wanted something um, that fit in with the uh, current viewport, visual viewport API. And so we have actually proposed nixing the window segments enumeration API, and we've gone on and made some updates to the visual viewport API. Um, so, and that fits in a little bit better and is easier to work with for developers. And so that's sort of, sort of the quick overview for dual screen. 
Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. And for folks who haven't had a chance to catch those talks yet, uh, if you go to the aka.ms slash build dash 2021 dash MS edge URL I mentioned earlier, uh, you'll be able to find a lot of the resources we've talked through today uh, at that link, including Stephanie's talk. Um, and I'll post that in the chat as well before we leave here. Um, looks like we have a couple good questions around dev tools. Uh, so I'll turn that over to Zohar. Specifically, it looks like there are some questions around uh, learning to use the inspect tool uh, in the edge dev tools and uh, how that relates to uh, some of the uh, DOM element highlighting in IE. All right, yeah, so uh, we definitely know that the dev tools can be scary and overwhelming at times. Um, so we've invested a lot in improving our documentation and curating a set of docs for beginners to introduce the dev tools better. Um, we're also doing stuff like having the welcome tool and like kind of a more friendly way to you know start using the dev tools. Um, so yeah, please take a look at those docs and definitely give us your feedback. Let us know how that goes for you. Um, you can tweet at us at Edge DevTools and we have a feedback icon directly in the DevTools UI in the top right corner that you can use um, you know, to let us know what you think. Uh, in terms of the inspecting elements, uh, we do have a button in the top left corner of the DevTools called like, uh, you know, select element on the page to highlight it. And that makes it really easy to navigate across the DOM, um, you know, with your mouse while seeing the actual relevant el uh, element highlighted in the elements tool in the DevTools. It's a cool nifty integration with the browser. Great. Thanks so much, Zohar. I appreciate it. Um, I think that takes us uh, to the end of our allotted time here. So I wanted to uh, thank everyone for joining and for all the great questions you've asked. Um, you know, I know we weren't able to get to every single question in the chat. So, uh, you know, as as noted on the slide here, we have lots of resources uh, available at the Build 2021 MS Edge URL, which I've also posted in the chat. Uh, you can feel free to reach out to individual team members as well if you have uh, follow up questions uh, about a specific area that we discussed. Um, I think with that, you know, I wanted to post a quick reminder to, um, oh, I lost my mouse, uh, quick reminder to check out all the uh, Microsoft 365 build sessions, uh, including associated XD export sessions, which I have uh, on screen here. Uh, and don't forget to join uh, the M365 developer program. Um, you can find out more at the URL on the screen here. Uh, so thanks everyone for your time and really uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your build.